Hello and welcome to the group room where we're at the 34th annual CTRC AACR San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. I'm very happy to be joined right now with Dr. Hope Rugo, clinical professor in the Department of Medicine and director of breast oncology and clinical trials education at UCSF Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center. Thanks for having me. Today we're going to focus on advances and challenges and successes in the treatment of metastatic breast cancer, which is making more news here at this conference. It's the theme of our advocacy and action program here, and I am so happy that we can shed more light and hope and possibilities for women dealing with more advanced disease. At this meeting, uh, we've seen advances in HER2-positive disease, in reversing hormone resistance, um, and We've talked a lot about and seen a little bit of data about how to maybe go back and look at the areas that we have stumbled a bit on, which is uh, looking at PARP inhibitors in triple negative breast cancer uh, and the use of anti-angiogenic agents, specifically bevacizumab. We heard about an updated results of the Bolero 2 trial that I'm involved in and I'm an author on. Uh, that trial actually did a a sort of a clinical enrichment. So the idea was we want to we always want to find a marker. How do we treat patients with an agent and know who the patients are who are most likely to respond? Well, we know for example if you have hormone receptor positive disease you're more likely to respond to hormone therapy. If you have HER2 positive disease, you're more likely to respond to HER2 directed therapy. And past that we don't have a lot of information. So we did a study, a neoadjuvant trial with Everolimus, the mTOR inhibitor, and uh, letrozole, the aromatase inhibitor, trying to see if we could find a marker of response to resistance. And although it was better, the combination, than letrozole alone, we didn't find a marker. So then uh, the idea was how do we enrich to do a trial in the metastatic setting? The, there was a previous trial with an mTOR inhibitor, a different one called Temsorolimus, combined with letrozole versus letrozole, first-line therapy for a metastatic breast cancer, ER positive, mm -hmm. postmenopausal women, and met a futility endpoint, enrolled about 1,000 patients and didn't see a benefit. So you kind of left with a, a puzzle about how to capitalize on what appears to be the ability of mTOR inhibitors to synergize with hormone therapy or help the hormone therapy to work better, but a trial that was negative. So the idea was that if you take patients who have ER positive disease, but it's become resistant over time, it appears that the pathways that are associated with resistance are increased so there's more signaling or more activity through those pathways as the cancer becomes more resistant. So Bolero 2 focused on women whose cancers had progressed on either letrozole or anastrozole and randomized women to receive either exemestane or exemestane plus everolimus. And having participated in the trial from beginning to end, I think it's, uh, it's true that all of the steering committee members we're very surprised by the strength of the results. Uh, it was a tremendously positive trial meeting its endpoint to progression-free survival, which is great. Is this an oral therapy? It's or a it? pill you take every day. So that's the other thing that's nice about the combination of everolimus and exemestane is it's all oral therapy. But I think we have to ha also have to be sanguine about you know cost of combined therapy, looking for survival effects, and uh, making sure that. Uh, practitioners and patients alike are aware of side effects and so they can identify them early. One of the biggest problems we have in Everolimus is no exception, is that there is off-target toxicity. So what that means is that, um, actually we don't know if maybe just hitting the target causes the toxicity too for mTOR, but you know, you, you have your anti-tumor effect and clearly this anti-tumor effect was much greater than we had thought it would be. Um, but you also get sort of these side effects which impact patient's ability to tolerate the treatment. So if you're going to be able to stay on a treatment for longer and live longer, maybe, we haven't seen the survival data from Bolero 2 yet, we won't see that till next year, then it's worth it as long as your quality of life is pretty good still. 
So one of the things we have to do when we look at results like Bolero 2, Cleopatra, other trials, is to say, okay, when we added the new drug, what were the side effects? And how, how was it tolerated by patients? And we did a quality of life analysis in Bolero 2, and quality of life deteriorated some over time as the cancer progressed, but it was identical whether you were taking exemestane or the combination. The issue with Everolimus is mouth sores, some fatigue, but mainly mouth sores. And uh, we found that if you're aware of it and you know, educate the patient very well beforehand, that when the patient tells you they're starting to get mouth sores, you hold the drug, you reduce the dose, generally they can be very well managed. So few patients stopped because of untreatable mouth sores. I also think that when one is dealing with aggressive disease, patients are so eager to do whatever they have to do and will endure so much to get us through what we have to get through, even if it's tough sometimes. Well, I think that's true, but I think that we play as uh, providers a very important role, as do the advocates, um, in educating patients with advanced disease about weighing risks versus benefits at every step of the way. So, um, you know, we, it's very interesting, you know, the, the uh, HER2 story. What we've learned is that combinations of drugs that target the HER2 receptor work better than a single agent. In metastatic disease, we're now just going to learn if it cures more women in the early stage setting. But uh, it's really fascinating that by taking this one target that's so important, HER2, and by sort of hitting it in different directions, right. that you can escape some of the mechanisms for resistance. What's on the horizon? What do you see as the next phase in the successes and challenges with the treatment of metastatic disease. Well, I, I sort of feel like this year some of the agents are like a phoenix rising out of the ashes, you know, um, that we have a new way of looking at uh, PARP inhibitors, Iniprib, which didn't turn out to block PARP at the doses in which it was given, so now a dose, increasing dose study is going on. That's exciting. I think really understanding how PARP inhibitors work and who they work in, so that's good. It seems to be right now primarily in patients with BRCA mutations. For antiangiogenic therapy, it's finding a marker that will tell us who responds to these agents. And I think we're closer to it now than ever before. In some ways, the FDA's decision to take bevacizumab off the approved list for bre metastatic breast cancer pushed that study in a way that maybe nothing else could have done. So they're looking at blood markers, uh, VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, and also some uh, genetics that you may be born with more of a sensitivity to these drugs or not. So very interesting as well. We have a rich uh, a group of HER2-directed therapies. It's unbelievable, and they all work. So we can actually try and figure out who's going to respond or not and pick the least toxic therapies. Uh, you know. Some studies that are here looked at markers that might predict response or resistance, and we still aren't there yet. It's still very muddy. And then the last thing, very important, is symptom control. We need to be sure that we're controlling symptoms for patients with advanced disease. I think that we put uh, way too little attention into that area. There is uh, new anti-nausea drugs, new combinations, uh, ways of better controlling pain uh, that are patient-controlled, you know, short-acting medications, which are really important, uh, making sure that we control cognitive impact, uh, psychological impact. Uh, and then we've been working on trying to prevent hair loss with chemotherapy with uh, some devices that don't require as much act, uh, effort on the patient's part. So these are all, I think, great directions. I really appreciate that you take the time to also talk about the quality of life and looking at the patient as a whole person and so much more than their disease and really caring about how they feel and, and how they look. And it, Thank you. It's, it's, I think, critical to our, whole, to our whole approach and this idea of individualizing therapy as we move forward. Thank you, Dr. Hope Rugo, clinical professor, the Department of Medicine, and the director of breast oncology, the clinical trials program at UC San Francisco. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rugo.